Hello everyone, welcome back to Dekin Cards and today we'll be taking a look at problem 2 from the IMO 2024. So this is a continuation of the series of videos where I'll be going through the IMO 2024 problem. And this problem 2 over here is a really interesting number theory problem. So let us take a look at the problem statement. So problem 2 is a number theory problem. And you might be quite surprised to see a number theory problem for problem 2 given that problem 1 has quite a little bit of number theory flavor to it as well. So let's take a look at problem 2. Find all positive integer pairs a, b such that there exist positive integers g, n for which gcd a to the power n plus b, b to the power n plus a is equal to g holds for all integer n bigger than or equal to capital N. Okay, it sounds a bit confusing. Let me just paraphrase it very quickly. This is basically saying that you want to find all the pairs a, b such that if you look at this GCD expression over here, you can actually increase n from 1 to infinity. This GCD will eventually become constant. That's what you want. Because if it eventually becomes constant, then you can find you can let G be that constant GCD and capital N is the threshold beyond which the GCD is constant. So hope that becomes clear. Uh, so once again you want to find AB such that this GCD expression eventually becomes constant as N increases from 1 to infinity. Okay. So there's actually a really uh, neat solution to this, but this problem, I would really like to go spend some time motivating on how you might approach this problem and reach the solution because I think it's really instructive and the solution is actually really motivatable. So let's take a look uh, at some motivation, starting with small cases to understand how this uh, GCD and this whole problem works. So the first natural thing to try is whether 1 comma 1 works. Well, indeed, the GCD is just going to be equal to 2 for all values of n. So obviously it's going to be eventually constant. So yes. Okay, next natural thing to try. Does k comma k work where k is bigger than or equal to 2? Well, in this case, the GCD expression is this and as n changes, it will not be eventually constant, it will keep changing. So the answer is no. Okay, the next natural thing to try is 1 comma b, where b is at least 2. So this is slightly more interesting. This is the GCD expression that we are after. Now, if n is odd, then b plus 1 divide b to the n plus 1. So this GCD will just be b plus 1. If n is even, we can show that b plus 1 does not divide b to n plus 1. Quite simple because if you look at mod b plus 1, b is congruent to minus 1. So this thing is congruent to 2 mod b plus 1. And uh, b plus 1 over here is uh, at least 3. So this thing is not 0. So what this shows is that b plus 1 does not divide b to n plus 1. So if you look at the GCD value as n changes, uh, you have b plus 1, not b plus 1, b plus 1, not b plus 1, and so on. So it is definitely not eventually constant. So the answer is no. This turns out to be quite an important example to consider because you realize that what has obstructed uh, the eventual constant behavior is there's some pattern where like, oh, uh, quite regularly, b plus 1 is the GCD, but after outside of the uh, regular pattern, there's also uh, instances where b plus 1 is not the GCD. So maybe you can find uh, some behavior where there's some pattern where something appears in the GCD regularly, but it doesn't appear in the other GCD values, which means the GCD will not be eventually constant. Okay, keep that at the back of your mind for now. Even if you have not realized this when looking at this example, the next natural thing to try would have been 
a small case, like 2 comma 3. We already tried 2 comma 2 because that's the KK example. So this is really the next natural small example to try. And the same uh, motivation will emerge again. In this case, these are the two terms that you want to uh, plug in here to calculate the GCD of. And you realize that when n equals to 1, you have 5 on both sides. Okay, so it looks like 5 is the GCD when n equals to 1. And what you might realize is that, hey, if you look at mod 5, as n increases, this will cycle through uh, the different values mod 5 with cycle length 4. And same thing for here. And this means that actually the two terms are divisible by 5 uh, every fourth term, but all the other terms are not divisible by 5. And this pattern continues. This means that the GCD cannot be eventually constant because 5 will appear in the GCD. 5 will divide the GCD every fourth term, but it does not divide the other GCDs. So the answer here again is no, but it should be quite clear now. A possible way of attacking this problem is indeed to find something that divides the GCD uh, regularly, but doesn't divide the other terms, uh, the other GCD terms. So this motivates the following approach. You might want to look for some value of Q such that this two divisibility holds for infinitely many n, but there are also infinitely many n where at least one of these divisibility fails. And this together will tell us that, okay, Q divides the GCD uh, infinitely often, but there are also other infinitely many terms where Q does not divide the GCD. And so the GCD cannot be eventually constant. And this will then eliminate those uh, A, B as valid solutions. Now, it is quite simple to prove the first, to, to construct the first one once you have at least one valid uh, solution of N. So if N0 is some value of N where both divisibility holds, you can actually very quickly construct all the other infinitely values of n where both divisibility holds by using the Euler phi function. Because a to the phi q is congruent to 1 mod q, assuming a and q are co-prime. Okay, so uh, I did not write this down, but to use this, you need a and q being co-prime. So we do have infinitely many indices where this uh, these two divisibility will hold. And if you want to then construct values of n where at least one of the divisibility fail, it's quite natural to look at the next uh, increment in the power. So if you just increase the power by 1, chances are it will fail because you are multiplying this thing by 1, uh, by a, which seems to be co-prime with q. So uh, this will likely cause this to fail, right? So Let's see what happens if it doesn't fail. If this divisibility still holds, it stubbornly holds, then this subtracting this will be divisible by Q. So Q will divide this whole thing, which means that you can take out the common power of alpha. So it's A to the this thingy times A minus 1. So Q divide A or Q divides A minus 1. The same argument can be used for the B side. So Q divide B or Q divides B minus 1 if the divisibility does not fail. So if we avoid Q divides AB, which can be done if we even make A and B co-prime with Q, then uh, at least one of the divisibility will fail unless A and B are both congruent on one mod Q. And this seems unlikely because it looks like it will contradict the divisibility condition that we have for the base uh, index. Because this expression here will be 1 plus 1 congruent to 2. Uh, and so how can it be deserved by Q if it's congruent to 2? Well, unless Q equals 2, right? Which seems really unlikely. So it seems that this line of attack might work. So the crux then is we need to find Q and uh, N0 such that we can set up this whole argument, which I will do rigorously in a bit. So if you are a genius, you will probably be able to come up with the Q out of thin air. 
which is what some of the solutions look like, but there are actually some hints here to help you find the right cue, which I also want to point out in case the solutions look very uh, mysterious to you. For one thing, you want Q to be co-prime with A and B. Uh, and also, we talk about how this thing will be a contradiction unless Q equals to 2. And you recall that uh, 1, 1 is a solution. So the Q equals 2 might correspond to the scenario where 1, 1 is a solution. So all this put together and a bit of thinking will lead us to the official solution, which okay, it's not official solution, it's uh, basically the solution I have, but it leads us to the proper solution, which is as follows. So here's the solution. It turns out that the Q you are looking for is A, B plus 1. So you see it's co-prime, 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Yeah, so you see where this is going. So now let's talk about official solution. Uh, let's talk about the proper solution. Let us suppose A, B works. So A, B is some valid solution to this problem. Let us define Q equals A, B plus 1 and N0 equals phi Q minus 1. Then under mod Q, your A to the N0 plus B, what do we have? Because A to the phi Q is going to be congruent to 1 by the Euler theorem. Note here A and Q are co-prime, so we can apply the, the Euler theorem. So if you minus 1, then you get the A inverse over here. So A inverse plus B, you can take out the A inverse, then you get 1 plus AB. And by magic, 1 plus AB is Q, so this is 0. So this means that Q actually divides A to the N0 plus B. And by same argument, Q divides B to the N0 plus A. And that's not, that's not just it. By the Euler's theorem, a to the phi q is 1. So I can tack on as many copies of a to the phi q as I want over here. So q also divides this. q divides this for all k greater than or equal to 0. So this means that because your GCD is eventually constant, remember a, b here, we assume it's a valid solution. Since the GCD is eventually constant, then Q must divide this eventual GCD. This means that if you uh, reach the point where GCD is eventually constant, namely uh, from this capital N onwards, Q must divide this, Q must divide this, but Q must also divide the next power. So Q also divides this and Q divides this. And putting these two together, we see that we can take the difference. Q divides the difference, which is a to the n times a minus 1, which means because a and q are co-prime, so q divides a minus 1. This means a congruent of 1 mod q. The same argument over here gives us b congruent of 1 mod q. And now we see that q, recall we have the divisibility, but A and B are congruent 1, so this thing is congruent to 2 mod Q. So how can Q divide something that is congruent to 2 mod itself? Well, this can happen if Q equals 1 or Q equals 2. But taking a look at this, the only possible solution then is Q equals 2 as well as A equals B equals 1. So this forces the only possible candidate to be this. And lastly, you just need to check that this solution indeed works as we have checked earlier when talking about the motivation. So that is all to the proof to problem 2. What do you think of this problem? Personally, I thought that the solution is really interesting and really ingenious. It is also really elegant. The biggest question mark, the biggest part that makes this mysterious is how do you come up with the, the motivation to look at Q equals AB plus 1? which I hope the entire 10 minutes spent on the motivation section is well worth spending to give you a sense of how we reach this solution. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about problem 2. Okay, so that is all for problem 2. More IMO 2024 videos will be coming out shortly. It's taking me a while to work on the super monstrous problem 3. So stay tuned to the channel for these videos and I will see you soon.